Hi, Mariah. Hi. Hi, Detective Chris Wagner from Carver County. Did I get you at a bad time? No, this nope. is perfect time to talk. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> thank you. I got your message. and I, Yeah, you must have been traveling or something because I know your phone just went to voicemail when I called earlier, but... Um, oh my gosh! Yeah, it's probably service. I'm in California right now, so my service is like really in and out. So. Okay. Okay. Oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I understand, Mariah, that you were uh, an assistant to Prince before Marone was, and um, I'm one of the investigators that's handling Prince's death. And okay, um, there, your name had came up as somebody that I might want to talk to you that might be able to have some information. And I'm not sure what information you would have. Um, okay. And so I guess that's what I was looking for. And I was just wondering if I could just get some basic information from you, if you were willing to talk yeah, to absolutely. me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, like, I don't have, like, a, a whole lot, but, I mean, anything you know, I, you know, anything that I know, I will totally... Okay. You know, well, I pre- let you know. So, <laughs> yeah, of course. It. Well, of course, we want to just, um, you know, see what we can find out as far as the, from those people that knew him. You know, I, I never met mm-hmm. him. So, um, yeah. you obviously knew him personally, so you would know um, some information too. So, how do you spell your first name, Mariah? So, it's M A R I A H. Okay, and do you have a middle name? Kathleen. Kathleen, and it's Brown, correct? Yep. And yep. what's your birth date, Mariah? 4-15-1991. And do you have an address here or in California, or what would be your mailing address if I was? Um, let's do let's do the one back in Minnesota. So it's 791. Okay. That's Laurel, L-A-U-R-E-L, Laurel Ave. Okay. That's in St. Paul, Minnesota, 55104. Okay. And are you out in California still? Are you you a model, aren't you, too? Yep. Okay. Doing that and, like, back and forth. Just a lot of back and forth right now. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, well, let's start at the basics. Um, so when did you get hired or when did you start working for Prince? I started working with him in... I want to say October of 2013, either September or October. Okay. And how long do you think, or do you remember when you worked until? Um, maybe, when was it? The end of 2014 or 15? Oh, my gosh. Why can I not remember this? I want to say it was... Going into 2015, if I remember, honestly. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And you were personal assistant? Correct. Okay. So, like, what kind of things would you do for him? So, I would basically just run errands. It would be daily um, going and getting food for him, um, getting clothes. Um, anytime we would travel, I would travel before him just to, you know, check out the rooms and stuff and, um, Basically anything that he couldn't go and do on his own as far as, you know, what we go and do on a daily basis. Just getting food mainly and, um, you know, making phone calls, setting up meetings, sending out emails, all that stuff. Okay. And when you said emails, do you remember the email address that you communicated with him on? Um, I don't remember it correct, like the whole thing. I mean, it is in my email though. It's like a a JR Ramana. JR Rama. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That I one. just wanted, wanted to confirm <laughs> that we were talking about the same the same yep. email address. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. And is is it true that he didn't have a cell phone when you worked for him either? That you would, correct? No, he never had one. <laughs> okay, so you would just communicate with him um, it, it, at Paisley then. Yep, at Paisley, he would mainly send out emails or he would call from the um, the landline. Okay, and that would have been either his bedroom or the kitchen. Yep, correct. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, and then how did you did were you friends with Marone? Or, or did you know Marone, or how did no, you, she, she get... No, not really. Okay. I, um, so 
it was a thing where the prior assistant to me, she just kind of quit, and I was, you know, new into everything, and um, I was just kind of having trouble doing it all on my own, so I was like, can I please, you know, find someone else to hire in? And he's like, okay, sure. So um, our makeup artist, actually, she kind of was just throwing people out there. Maroon, she does modeling as well. So um, okay. I just, she was like, oh, why don't you try her out? So I, you know, kind of just reached out to her. Um, I didn't, I don't really know her background that much. I don't know too much about Maroon, to be honest. Okay. That was one of my questions is if you knew her because I knew you had, um, I think somebody that I talked to had kind of said that Marone was kind of brought in by you. So maybe this is why yeah. they were saying this was because you um, were both models and mm -hmm. that's kind of how you kind of just reached out to her. Yeah, I know. I, I never like spoke to her anytime, you know, prior to that before. It was just kind of a, hey, you know, how are you? My name's Mariah. Blah, 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 like, are you interested in, you know, coming and working here? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think if Julie, our makeup artist, knew her personally or if... No, I don't think it was ever personal. I think, like I said, it was probably just through um, modeling gigs and stuff. But no, prior to that, I honestly, I know nothing too much about her. Okay. Um, do you still talk to her at all? No, things... Um, after the after he passed, like I tried reaching out to her, but she wouldn't really respond back. Like kind of that whole little group that was still with him, they all kind of got a little weird and they weren't, you know, responding back and stuff. Okay, so and, who, um, who do you mean by got weird, or who do you mean as the group? So like when I know Maroon was still with him, um, I think Kirk was still working with him at the time. Okay. Um, mainly those two, honestly, because I know for sure those two were. The main ones there, and you know, me and Theo and um, Kieran, we would try to, you know, we were just trying to reach out and figure out what was going on, but everyone was just, you know, super secretive or like not really responding, or, you know, Maroon responded, but she was like really just short, and it's like, okay, you know, this is really weird, but whatever. So, okay. Well, that was one of my questions, is if you would talk to her since Prince died, but I take it... Oh, that, yeah, no. No, she kind of just went... I wish. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could, because, you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, me and Theo, we just have a different um, view on the whole thing, and I just, you know, things are just kind of fishy to me, and it's just weird, you know, and... Um, you know, for them not to even reach out to people who, you know, we were with him and work with him as well. It just, it, it's just kind of weird to me <laughs> that you wouldn't even reach out to, you know, say what's going on. And I mean, obviously I know what, I know the gist of like what happened, but you know, I don't know anything deeper within, you know? Yes. Okay. So, um, you mentioned Theo, um, and yes. it's Theo London, correct? Yep, Theo London. Okay. Um, and he, I, I will just tell you, he's the one who actually told me to reach out to you. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, I usually don't. No, I love tell, Theo. I'm so happy. Like. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I usually want to kind of, you know, people sometimes are like, well, how did you get my number? How did you know yeah. who I was? And so mm -hmm. um, that just so you. Put your mind at ease. That's who had kind of said that I should talk to you. Um, oh yeah, no, no problem. I'm happy. You know, like I didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on anymore with everything, and I'm just like, I hope something is like being investigated and something is going on because you know, like I said, to me and Theo, it's all just, it's crazy. You know, like I don't know. Yeah. So um, we're we're still working on this, and so I guess one of the things that I was. Um, interested in asking you and as Theo had said was that everyone knew um, for the most part that Prince was addicted to pain pills um, and that he had had a doctor that was in Minneapolis. Yeah, I'm, I, I wonder if, I cannot remember the doctor's name. Um, I want to flip through emails to see if I have the name in there. Um, I believe maybe his bodyguard has the name, but again, I'm not exactly sure if he has her? the name of it. Um, no, Romeo. This oh. is the older. Um, oh, have yeah. you spoke to Romeo before? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. 
No, like I, I don't know, but I will happily go through emails, like all of my emails to see if there's something in there or a name that will like pop up. Because me personally, I never called um, a doctor before for him. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Who, call, who would yeah. call the doctor? I think it might have been girl Phaedra. I know she was involved in some in some of it, maybe Phaedra, maybe um, Romeo. I honestly, I cannot, you know, remember. It would have to take for me to go into my emails to see and look at um, and look at everything again to see who would have called. Okay. So I could definitely do that and you know give you a yes. call back. Um, Yep. At a different time, if I come up with anything. But no, besides that, like, um, you know, the whole addiction thing, I truly didn't know anything about it that much. You know, like, all I knew, I knew he was in pain. Um, I knew he had some, like, back and hip pain going on. But I didn't know to what extent, you know. Like, I, I never wanted to you know, ask him about it or talk to him about it. Okay. Because truthfully, it's like, okay, like, I get it, I work for him, but that aspect is really, you know, somewhere I didn't want to dig into and start asking him, you know, personal questions and stuff. Okay, so, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Mariah, just so you, you understand, you're not any part of this investigation as far as... Um, I just want to make sure I clarify that with you that we're not looking at people that might have given him drugs, back, you know, like back to you or Theo or yeah. anybody like that. We're just trying to find mm -hmm. out currently um, yeah. who who was responsible currently. Um, yeah. And what had happened. It's, so, yeah, if you think yeah, of anything I, you or, know. or um, are you, do you talk to Romeo still or not? I don't, but I can definitely try to reach out to him. I'm not sure if he has the same number, but um, I can email him. But, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, um, like I said, I, I could only think of three, four people that were with him that day. So, obviously, you know, one of them is responsible for this. <laughs> okay. You know, yep. whether it was, I know, you know, Judith was with him, Marone, I think she was with him on the trip, and Kirk was there. I'm not sure if Theo mentioned um, Phaedra to you or not. I'm not exactly sure if she was there as well. Yeah, what do you know or about Phaedra? If, did you work with Phaedra also? I did. She's not my favorite, to be honest. Um, and why is that? Just a lot of shady things that she would do. Um, you know, personally, she screwed me over with taxes. And she, you know, just manipulated a lot of people when we were working, got a lot of people fired. Um, she worked her way into being in charge of Prince's money and, like, kind of knocked Theo out and just, you know, stuff like that. Like, you can just tell she just, she just she's not a great person at all, to be honest. And I don't say that about anyone at all. But her, you know, everyone around, you know, that work, and they will say the same thing, like, she just she just came off really weird, and I, I just personally I, I don't like her. <laughs> okay, when you the said, way that she worked, the things she did. When you said that she screwed you out of taxes, what does that mean? So she basically went and and um, so I was a W two employee with them. So you know my taxes they were being taken out. Yeah. When I was working and getting paid, and then um, all of a sudden after I stopped working with them, I get this huge 1099 for like a hundred thousand dollars basically saying i have to pay taxes on this so i'm just like okay you know what why am i getting a 1099 and what is all this amount of money and she's like well that's the amount of money you made and you have to pay taxes on it's like phaedra are you kidding me right now like you know i was a w-2 employee so somewhere in between there i got switched to a 1099 without being told and that she sent me Basically, you know, because I, I would spend my personal money on prints, and um, I would get reimbursed for it. And um, so she basically added all of my reimbursement on there and basically said, oh, yeah, you have to pay taxes on this. So I did go through a lawyer, and I got that all fixed, but still at the end of the day, you know, it's left me having to pay all this money in taxes, and I'm still, you know, I still didn't do it yet. Because it's a thing where it's like, do I want to go back in 
with a different lawyer and like you know go after her i mean this is super irrelevant to what you know is going on right now and what you're investigating but that's just something i personally am dealing with her right now with (laughs) so it's kind of like you know stuff like that that she would do and um so just money wise so when you when prince would say you know i want some food or something you would use your own personal money to go buy it for him and then keep track of it and then he would pay you back Yep, he would pay me back. I would, um, I put everything on a spreadsheet for him, you know, what's owed to who, and send it in, and he would approve of it, and then, um, yeah, it would just get paid back to everyone else, so. Would you, would you still have any of those spreadsheets at all? Uh, yeah, I think I do have some of them. If, if you wouldn't mind, would you just, could you send them to me or email them just so that I'd be kind of curious as to what he was having you buy at that time or if that or yeah. was it just basically food and that's it no it was basically food so i i would make my own personal um so what would happen is we each would make our own personal spreadsheet so i mean i can send you those and then we would put it all on um on one big one you know for people who you know okay so weekly pay or whatever this person gets that this person gets that so it's not like the final one isn't itemized for him to see all he sees is um the amount of everything and then he you know he'll go through it and look and he'll either approve it or not oh i have i have my own personal ones that i sent in i mean i could send you those ones if you want to um look at it but yeah mainly it's it was mainly food and toiletry stuff. Like, that's it. <laughs> oh, okay. You, but you don't have, like, Kirk's or anybody that was working their spreadsheet? Just, no. Oh, mm-hmm. then, oh, disregard then, Mariah. I don't, I don't think yeah. it's <laughs> it's okay. I was thinking if it was everybody's expenses, that would be Oh, no. Okay. I wonder who would have that one, though, because they, they obviously had to send it into stuff. Actually, you know what? It could be, again, Phaedra. Like, I don't know if you spoke with her or if you... Um, plan on it but i mean some people they would send it in to her and um she would make the spreadsheets as well so she might have everyone's itemized um things um again i will definitely look through my emails though but i don't remember anyone ever sending me their um itemized spreadsheet at all for reimbursement okay that's fine then um you had mentioned that phaedra had uh kind of weaseled her way into being in charge of prince's money can you tell me a little bit about that so i Dino can actually tell you more because it happened to him but um i just know that what was it he would know better than me but i know there was a time where um you know theo was in charge of the money and he was in charge of the accounts and phaedra would like go back and forth with theo just like randomly asking him these questions like oh so hey how is your um how's your how's your credit you know or oh hey how is your bank account oh who do you bank you know just like these weird questions and feels just like you know why you know why is she asking all these weird questions or whatever and basically she like went behind his back and went to prince and was like oh just so you know I honestly can't remember. I'm sorry. It's like bits and pieces, but like I said, Theo will tell you, can tell you more, but um, she was like, she basically went behind Theo's back and went to Prince and was like, said something about you have to have this credit score, this, or said something to Prince that made him want to have her in charge of the money now. So it was just like, you know, it's like, why, you know, why did you do that in the first place? Like, you know, just, it's, it's just weird to me. That's like, yeah, that's, why would you do that? (laughs) Okay. Were you there at all when, um, Phaedra got the masters back for Prince? Was that during your time? Yes. With Warner? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was there. Um, I was actually at the meeting and, um. That, too, honestly, was just weird. (laughs) All of this stuff is just weird to me. So we were in the meeting, and um, I remember Prince wanted to, um, it was either between Warner or L.A. Reid that he wanted to choose to work with. And he's just asking me, like, you know, what do you think? What do you think? Um, And I'm just like, I, I wouldn't go with, you know. I mean, getting his master's back, cool, that's totally fine. But it was a thing where if he wanted to re-sign with Warner. And um, I I said no. I said I wouldn't do it if I were you. Um, I'd just go with this person, you know, 
that to that. And she, it just seemed like she kept trying to push him to, you know, go back with Warner. Um, I don't know if it just even makes a lot of sense to you, but to me, it was just like, you know, because I know the past and what happened, obviously, a long time ago, years ago, when, you know, that all happened. And it's like, why would you want to, you know, do this again? Because, you know, if something were to happen, they obviously are going to, you know, have your music now again, and you, you don't know what's going to happen, you know, later on down the road and stuff. And sure enough, you know, you have all this music just all over the Internet now and just, you know, on Apple and Spotify and stuff, which is just bizarre to me. So um, but basically, Phaedra, it seemed like she just kept pushing him to go and go back with Warner. And to me, personally, it just, it was just weird. Like, okay. You just keep pushing him in these, like, weird directions, and he just, he didn't see what she was doing, you know, behind closed doors. Like I said, you can speak to all of the band members, anyone that was with him at the time, and they will tell you, you know, yeah, Phaedra did this, Phaedra screwed me with this, she did that, you know? Like, it's just never a good thing with her. So that's why I'm really skeptical about her in the first place. Okay. Because it's just, it's just weird to me. I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, did you know anything about Phaedra, um, setting up his royalties or anything like that? Uh, no. No, okay. Um, you said that Phaedra was kind of the one who would organize him meeting doctors and things like that? I want to say she did maybe once or twice, um... Again, like I said, I will definitely go through my emails and I will um, let you know what I find. Okay. But I know for sure, you know, this this last time, where you know, before his death, I know she, I believe she was involved in it as well. And, um, you know, he flew to the hospital, whatever, didn't want to stay or whatever the story was, and he left. And then, um... You know, for them to call a doctor X amount of days later, again, is just weird to me. Like, why would you wait so many days to call a doctor for him when clearly he, you know, he's sick or whatever the case was? Sure. You know, so that to me was also fishy, and I think she was the one who might have called um, that doctor at the time as well when they found him in the elevator dead or whatever it was. Okay. So, um... You know, it could have been. Again, I will definitely look through my emails and let you know all what I find, if I find the doctor's name and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have a pen? I can give you my email address if that would be. Or do you want to just call me and I, if you can either call this number is my office number. You can also just call and leave a message also. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, whatever works. Um, let me see. Let me put it in my computer, though, anyway, it's just so I have your email. Okay. Um, give me one second. Okay, what's your email? It's C. Wagner, and Wagner's spelled W-A-G-N-E-R. Okay. At co.carver.mn.us. Okay. Perfect. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely either email you or... Um, give you a call when I look through that. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, I, I'm just really curious if there was any doctors that you remember setting up appointments for or anybody that, yeah, that you would have had to um, schedule anything. And when you had said the assistant quit, was that Crystal that quit before you or no. somebody else? No, nope, it was Michaela. Michaela. Do you know what her last name was? Um... I don't know her. Okay. Was it she, could be Ferguson. Ferguson, I think. Was I she before Kieran? She was kind of during Kieran. Um, okay. I know, I remember those two kind of like working together. So Michaela is the one that brought me in, and then she just ended up quitting, and nobody could like get a hold of her at all anymore. So. Okay. Um. So you understand kind of what our investigation is. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Is, is there anything, Mariah, that you think would um, be helpful for me to know or 
Um, I know you kind of he kind of expressed Phaedra that it's kind of being fishy, and then Kirk and Marone not you know talking to anybody after Prince died and stuff. Yeah. Anything else you can think of, or or even when you had worked for Prince, you know, did he ever have you go and get packages for him, or um, did he ever send packages? I, I assume did you stay at the Country Inn and Suites also? Um, I stayed there kind of sometimes. I mainly just stayed at my parents' house, though. So in St. Paul. Um, yep, in St. Paul. Okay. Did he um, ever send pa- packages that you weren't supposed to open or anything like that? No, no packages. Um, I never picked up anything for him. Um, as far as like painkiller stuff, I don't have a history of getting any of those at the doctor, so I don't. You know, he never asked me to get any before and um did you know if you know i did ask somebody at all who that would have been not that i know of not that i know of honestly um i'm trying to think if uh, he could have asked people prior to me coming in honestly um you know like i said i knew about his pain but i i didn't want to be the person to just like you know go deep into it with him because me personally i don't take painkillers Never, you know, maybe got them three times before when I was younger at the hospital, you know, like, you know, just stuff like that. So, okay. no packages I can think of. No. Oh, gosh, let's see. Would he have packages sent to um, Country and Suite still? Like, clothing, whatever? Not, not for him. Um, clothing, I would deal with that personally, and he only had one person who would... Um, who would make his clothing for him. So I was the one who would, where would it get sent to you? I'm trying to think if it would get sent directly to Paisley, actually. Do you know who the person was that made his clothes back then? Um, I have to look through my email for that one again. Okay. Some guy who's based out of um, LA. But I know for sure that was, that was nothing fishy at all because I would be the one to always inspect the package and make sure the clothes are there and what we ordered in particular and you know that was that okay um I'm trying to think but no other packages I I never I don't remember ever like him saying oh there's a package at the country and for me can you go get it and, you know that's like kind of weird <laughs> I'd be like okay what did you order because I would personally order things for him and mainly if it was you know, it may only be close. He would see something, and he'd be like, hey, Mariah, can you order this for me? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So, you know. Okay. That was pretty much that. Other than that, I don't know if there was other people doing stuff, you know. There were so many people around him, and he had a different um, relationship with each person around him. So you- I, I don't know if someone else might have grabbed him something or if he could have been asking other people, you know, stuff like that. Sure. So when he would ask you to buy him clothes, would you still pay your own cash for that? Or or did he yes. have a card or something that he put it on? Or No, Phaedra would never give me a card. I asked a billion times and she wouldn't um, give me a business card. Even though she had one, she wouldn't give me one. So um, I okay. still had to spend, you know, my own clothes and he doesn't shop. <laughs> no, I would spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars out of my own money and um, have to get reimbursed for it. So sometimes he would, um, in advance, he'll like say, "Oh, how much is it?" And he'll have um, Phaedra, you know, give or not Phaedra, the um, uh, what's her name, Marilyn, his banker. He'll ask her to transfer me the money, and I'll just order the the clothing or whatever. But it's it's rare that that happened. That happened maybe twice. So, um, yeah, it will all be out of my own money. And, um, yeah. Okay. Um, was Ray Roberts the cook back then when you were there? Ray, Ray. Oh, Ray. I think, is it Ray and Jules? Yeah. Is that who we're talking about? Yep. Uh, kind of. Um, we had, oh, how many did we go through? I want to say they were there at first, and then they got fired or whatever the case was, and then I brought in maybe two, was it two other people, or maybe one other person, and then he let them go as well, and then I brought Ray, and, um, well, I didn't bring them back. Marone, he he asked Marone to find a cook for him, and then it just 
randomly she ended up finding them and I was laughing. I was like, that's funny. You know, they used to be our cook before. And I was like, just bring them back anyway. So, um, yeah, they were there for a while though. I, okay. I think they were still there. Um, um, when he passed too, I believe he was, they were still working there. I'm not exactly sure. That's okay. So when he would want something in the kitchen, was it kind of like the assistant's job to communicate with like the cooks and stuff? You know, he wants this or that, or whose job would it be to order him stuff? Um, no. So it was, um, like I said, a daily thing. I would go and get him lunch from the same, the same restaurant every day. He would want the same thing. What is that? Um, and where was that? It was the Ecopolitan. That I think it's closed down now, but it's on Hennepin. I think it's on Hennepin. It's over in Minneapolis, though. It was like this little, um, I want to say it was some raw vegan place okay. or something like that. Um, so literally every day I would go to Ecopolitan and get him food and um, drop it off to him. And then for dinner is when the cooks would come. And they would, he wouldn't, sometimes he would ask for things, but other than that, they would just come and they would just make, you know, whatever it is that they, they make. And, um, it was just a daily thing. Like they would cook for him and the, the band members. So it was just a, you know, like a cycle uh, every day, the same thing, you know, they come up for dinner, they cook, and then I would go get him lunch and it was just, you know, a repetitive thing. So what did he eat every single day? The same thing. I know. He would eat, like, it was always different things I would try to get him, but, like, I can't even remember what was on the menu, but, um... Oh, so it's it wasn't the same food, it was just always the same place. Yeah, it was always the same place, oh, okay. but, like, different, yeah, different, um, I would just try to switch the items around, like a juice, you know, a juice and, um, whatever raw vegan stuff that they had there, I would just get that for him, but the cooks would, you know, they would obviously cook, um, different things each time they would come in. Okay, I thought when you said it, he'd always get the same thing, I was just curious. Oh, what, yeah, no, what was I mean. you eat every day, you know, so. I know. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Okay, so. I think basically, from what I kind of understand is, um, Phaedra, Marone, and Kirk, something was kind of fishy, but it sounds like you don't really, I mean, it was, you, did you have anything specifically with Kirk or Marone other than they just not communicate with you after his death, or was there something more? No, I mean, every, no, everything, you know, when I worked with them, they were fine, you know, okay. like, um... Everything was normal. We were just working, doing our job. And then all of a sudden, like I said, when that started happening and me and Theo were trying to reach out, well, I don't, I don't know if he got a hold of anyone, but, um, you know, I tried reaching out to Kurt. He didn't respond back. And um, Marone, and she just was like, I can't even remember what she texted me back, but I reached out. She didn't respond. And then I reached out again, and then she was just really short with me, and it's like, okay, whatever. And I know... Um, the young lady, Judith Hill, was with him at the time, too, but she, um, I don't I don't know if she had anything to do with anything, but I know she was with him when, you know, his plane landed and he was in the hospital because she spoke about it to me and Theo, actually, because we, we all went to dinner, and um, after it happened, we all went to dinner, and she was just, you know, really shaken up and just crying, and I, I don't know. So I don't know if she knows anything either. Okay. But, um, like I said, obviously, Marone, Kirk, Judith, Phaedra, one of them knows something. <laughs> like, it's a no-brainer. Something obviously happened when they were in Atlanta. I think it was Atlanta. Yeah, when they were in Atlanta. And, you know, they're just keeping quiet about it, which is frustrating me, you know? Yeah. It's like the, the person you work for is dead now because of something that someone possibly gave to him. And it, out of all four of you, one of you had to have set up something or gave him something because he, he, not, he can't do it on his own, <laughs> right. you know? Right. So it's just, it's crazy to me. So one of them knows something, but, you know, obviously it's going to be really difficult trying to, well, I, I don't know if it will be difficult, but I just know that for a fact. One of them knows something, and they're just not telling the truth about it. So, Okay. 
it, it saddens me, and that's just, you know, it's still on my mind till this day, because it, it's crazy, you know, if, if something happened, they need to just say what happened, exactly what happened. Right. Like, who gave it to him? Like, you know, if you gave him something, and you didn't know what it was, and then it happened, it's like, still, like, you know, tell someone. <laughs> like... Oh my goodness, so. Right, it would make our oh, job easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, and they probably, whoever it is, probably thinks that they're going to get in so much trouble, but I mean, technically, yes, you're giving him something that you probably shouldn't be giving him in the first place, unless it was a response from a doctor, but I don't think it was. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just, okay. it's weird, but you gave him something so strong that he's dead now, so it's just, it's bizarre. Okay. Um, I wanted to see if you knew some of the names of uh, Renville Wellington. Have you ever heard that name? What's the name? Renville Wellington. Renville? Yeah. No. Uh, I can try to pop these names into my email, too, though, to see if... Um, if you have, like, a list, too, of, like, names, if you could, like, email them over to me, I'll definitely pop them into my email to see if that name pops up, but I've never heard that name before. Okay. Um, what's your email address, Mariah? So it's um, mariahkbrown at gmail.com. Mariahkbrown at gmail? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, who, do you know any other security other than Romeo that he would have had and Kirk? Um, no, so mainly Romeo was, um, Romeo and Kirk were the main ones around. Um, when we were over in London, he used someone, like, once. Other than that, it was the same thing. Oh, actually, there was another one I was around for, like, a small period of time, but he really didn't, um, interact with him, you know? Okay. Like, it takes him a while to warm up to people. It took him personally three months to warm up to me. <laughs> so I don't see them, you know, anything happening with those guys. So there were a few people that were around when Romeo, you know, if he had, like, an emergency, we would have to hire someone else in. But, like I said, it was just, okay, them coming in, doing their job, and he really didn't communicate with them that much. <laughs> okay. Um I think that's all that I have right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I would appreciate if you could, if you did have time to go through. I'm really trying to find any doctors that he would have met with. Um, okay. Or if, it, if there was any appointments that were made. But you said for the most part you didn't do any of those setting up. Somebody else must have set appointments up for him. Yeah, no, I've never actually called or set anything up. Like, I think I received an email one time saying, oh, the doctor's here. And I think that might have been, like, a, a chiropractor or something. Um, but, again, I'll, I'll look through my emails to see what pops up. Okay. Yeah, Theo had, he had kind of told me that you did that. So I was trying to find out, or he thought that you might know who the doctor was. Mm -mm. I've no. never, like, actually called him before. Um, okay. Um, but did the doctor ever come like, out there at all, do you know? Did he ever come out, like, do house calls at Paisley? There was a chiropractor one time that came out, but that's the only person that I remember. I don't remember his name. Again, I, I didn't call him. Okay. Um, I, it could have been maybe Romeo or Phaedra, one of those two. Like, I, I don't know. Like, okay. Maybe there's, like, a spreadsheet with, like, people's names on it or something. But I'll definitely go through and um, and look for it. Because, like I said, I personally never have called anyone okay. to set up anything before. Okay. Yeah, Mariah, if, if you wouldn't mind um, taking a look and, and going through some of those things and, and sending them to me, you can email them to me if that's better. Um, anything okay. that you think might be useful, obviously, you know, um, what we're investigating and just trying to see if there's anything else that um, would be helpful for us. That would be great. And okay. Yeah. Is there anybody um, other than Theo that you think that I should talk to that would be helpful for this investigation at all? Um, have you, well, Kieran's over. Have you tried reaching out to Kieran before? Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, okay. That's the only person I can think of then. Um I'm trying to think of anyone else. Uh, Michaela, she, like, ran off the map, and I don't even think she would be 
okay. relevant in any of it. Um, no, honestly, like, I feel and Kieran are, like, the two best vets because, you know, they personally dealt with a lot, too, you know, with him and also with Phaedra, too, so, um... All right. Well, yeah. I know. If we hang up and you think of something, right? You've got my phone number. You got my email. Just let me know, and I appreciate your time. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for calling. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. All right. Bye bye.